Okay, so we're going to move on to section 7.2, which is where we're going to learn how to find those probabilities. So in 7.1, we talked about how to interpret the probability of a shaded area. But the question is, how do you find the probability of a shaded area? So that's the first objective. So you can see that we have a variable x that is normally distributed. We're going to find the following probability, include an appropriately shaded labeled picture. All right, so the mean is 75, sigma is 8, and I want the probability that x is greater than 90. Okay, I'm going to show this to you in StatCrunch first. So let me make StatCrunch a little bit smaller so we can see it. All right, and then we want a probability. So let me go to Stat, go down to Calculators, and we want the normal calculator right here. And it's saying, okay, normal calculator. So now we have to enter in our mean, which is 75, and our standard deviation, which is 8. And then we want the probability. We want a greater than probability. This is currently a less than symbol. So we're going to take it over here to a greater than symbol. And we want to choose greater than 90. Oopsie. Oh, <laughs> not greater than 90. I'm sorry. It's this guy right here, greater than 90 right there. And you can click Compute, and it finds it. See, 0 0.030396. I can't make it any bigger, guys. Sorry about that. That's just the way this web app thing goes. Now, the tricky part becomes, what do we do with this? Um, if we want to put it in an Excel spreadsheet, which we do, of course, to make Alana happy, then we're going to need a way to copy and paste it. And unlike the other ways that we've had before, this one doesn't really have a quick copy and paste feature. We can take a snapshot of it and we can use that or we can use something else. Um, so let me just show you. I have Excel. I'm going to name this 7.2 example 1. I'm going to find it a couple ways. So um, what you can do, if you have a program, this is, see this little sun up here? That's a free program. It's called Jing. You can download it for nothing. Um, J-I-N-G. Jing. Jing. Here. There. See at the bottom of the screen? It says Jing. J-I-N-G. So if you go look it up for Jing free download, you can get it, and it'll let you take a little picture like that. And then you could save that picture save it to your desktop or whatever. 7.1, example 1, save. Yep, I'll save it to my desktop. That's fine. And then when I'm in Excel, I could just insert that picture. So insert. This is kind of the more tedious way to do it. There we go. Insert picture. And there it is. Okay, so that's a free program. There are others, by the way, um, that you could use it for screen capture. You know, it's basically what you're trying to do, capture the screen. So that was kind of tedious. All right, well, fine. If you don't like the free program to do it, you know, we still need a way to show this. What you can do is you can take a snapshot. So you see the snapshot? Right there, you click snapshot. It's going to say, what do you want to name it? Title. So I'm going to say 7.1 example 1. And you don't have to share with anybody if you don't want, whatever. And click export. And then say it saved the results. You say, okay, cool. All right, where did it save the results at? Well, that's under my stat crunch. So you go to my stat crunch, you go to my results. And you can see I've done it a couple times here to play with it. There it is, 7.1 example one. So you can click on that. And you can copy. I click copy right there, and it kind of blinked out at me for a second. Then I go to Excel, and I right click, and I choose paste, and there it is. So that's a little bit faster, actually, than Jing. So either way, it'll work. It's free. And the reason I like this is because it shows a picture, right? And we can see what it's saying it is. It's 0 .03039. All right, now how do we do it with Excel? Because Excel, honestly, is a little bit faster. As long as we don't need a picture, I don't know if faster is the right word. I mean, they're both pretty good methods, but we want, let's see, the mean was, what was it, 75, and the standard deviation was 8, and the um, x value 
was 90, right? So if we want the probability that, um, here, I'll just put it this way, probability that x is greater than 90, that'd be equal to, all right, and what you do is, actually, let me not do that for a second. Let me just show you what's going to happen. The formula is norm.dist. And you can see it wants x, comma, the mean, comma, standard deviation, comma, cumulative. So x for you is 90. You could just type 90, comma, mean, which was 75, which is that cell right there, comma, the standard deviation, which is 8. And cumulative, you always say true. We're working with the cumulative, you see, true is the cumulative function, meaning it's shading. The probability mass function is just the height of the, the function itself, and we're not working with that. So ne we will never work with that. You will always say true. Enter. Now you're thinking, wait a second, that's not the same answer. Right. So the norm dist function always finds the area to the left. So what it found here was the probability that x was less than 90. That was equal to norm dot dist, or you could just say norm dist, norm dot dist or norm dist, and then it was 90 comma 75 comma 8 comma true, right? And you could, I used cell referencing to do it. I, you know, said cell, cell B3 for 90 or cell B1 for the mean, but you could literally just type it. It'll be fine. Norm dot dist, this thing. So what we were really looking for was the probability that x is greater than 90, right? Which is 1 minus norm dot dist 90 comma 75 comma 8 comma true. See, the thing about the function is that it always finds the left area, no matter what. That's norm dist. It always finds left. So if you want the right, you just have to subtract it from 1. So you go equals 1 minus that value we just found. Oops. Except you don't. Yes, yes, yes. Gosh. Excel just fights you so much when you make one little error. All right, there you go. Now, again, you could just type it all at once. 1 minus norm dot dist. Oh, and again, if you have old Excel, it's just norm dist right there, norm dist. So I have a new Excel, so norm dot dist, 90 comma 75 comma 8 comma true. And there you go. That's the correct answer. So I'm going to highlight that and put it right in my note sheet. Boom. And while I'm on the subject, I'm going to go back to StatCrunch. I'm going to copy this again. Copy. Cool. I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to paste. And I can make that a little smaller so we can see it better. Oops. I just didn't want to make the rest of the page disappear. But there you go. So either way you find it, it's 0 0.0304. And again, if you don't need the picture for things like just on tests and stuff, you don't need the picture, you don't need to copy and paste. That's only for your, your technology assignment if you're doing that. Um, that's how you can get it so that this picture shows up on your Excel spreadsheet. right? So there we go, we've done some two example one. Now let's see how it's going to change for the next ones. Ha! It's not going to change much at all. We're going to be doing the same kind of problems. Now I doubt I have time to finish all of these, but um, I'll do what I can on this video and then I'll pick up where I left leave off on the next one. So for this next one, I've got the probability that x is, here, hold on, I'm going to have to go back to my stack crunch, open stack crunch. It might be easier, honestly, to have stack crunch in one window and your data or your results, oopsie, not data, your results in the other window, just because that way, you know, it makes your life simpler. All right, so we want to go, I'm going to make this smaller so I can see it. Oh, another thing is you might actually just have the window open down here at the bottom with a little Java Java um, applet thing. So it's letting me know Java's running, which is good. But sometimes there'll be Java windows sitting down here that you can open up and use as well that have StatCrunch still running in them. All right, so let's go to data. Oops, sorry, stats. Stat. Calculators, normal. All right, I want to make the mean 30. 
I want the standard deviation to be 4. I want the probability that x is less than 25. Oof, 25. And then compute. And there it is. It found it for us. All right. And this one was a left le less than probability, so that's all great. So I'm going to save this right now. Let's take a snapshot. I'm going to call it 72. Um, oopsie. I just closed out on that accidentally. <laughs> See, there it is. 72 example 2a export. Okay. So now when I go into my stack crunch results, if I click refresh, hopefully it'll be there. There it is. So I click on that. Copy. And I go back to Excel. I'm going to make it a new sheet. 7.2 example 2a. There we go. Now how would I get it with Excel? Well, it's easier than the last one, honestly, because we want the probability that x is less than 25, but less than probabilities are exactly what Excel finds really easily. Let me zoom in so you guys can see. There we go. So all you have to do is equals norm.dist, then you tell it what the x value is, which was 25, comma, the mean, which was 30, standard deviation 4, and then always the word true, enter. And there you go. Notice it's the same answer. So they're both really quick and easy. I mean, honestly, I think maybe StatCrunch is a little bit easier because it's got the little dialog box. So it's, it's saying, you know, tell me what your mean is, tell me what your standard deviation is. At least Excel is a little bit harder right now. That said, um, StatCrunch is harder for the next problem, if I'm not mistaken. So let me copy and paste all this stuff in. Hold on. Well, I should mention that if you want to copy and paste from one to another, once I have this guy in here, I can click on the picture, that normal calculator picture, control C, copy, I can go back to my Word document and pretty quickly hit control V. And there it is. I want to make it much smaller though. Lots, lots smaller. <laughs> so otherwise I won't fit much on these pages if I have graphs that big all the time. Cool. All right, now the next ones are in fact harder, so I'm going to stop right here and I'll meet you back here for the next ones where I have to do, looks like there's a couple numbers going on there, so we're going to have to fight for that. I'll see you then.